Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. Saturday will see a first for St. Louis, the first variety show at the Link Auditorium in the Central West End. The theme is All St. Louis and will feature more than a little nostalgia. Joining me in studio to talk about the show, the venue, and that nostalgia are Brian L. Sesser. He's a Link Auditorium board member and will emcee the Link Presents, an evening of music and comedy on Saturday at the Link. Also with us is Robert Tuffy Brandon of the Tuffy and Logan Blues Band. Bob Lawrence is a long time... <laughs> hey, you're preempting me, young man. <laughs> well, you know, I, I got the, I'm a comedian. <laughs> I, I know. Well, let me finish introducing you, then <laughs> okay. you can do your shtick. Bob Lawrence, a longtime St. Louis comedian who can yes. take us back to the old Gaslight Square days. Yes, yes. Thank you all so much for being with us. Brian, let me start with you, because I think the link auditorium may come as a surprise to a lot of people, although it's been around for a long, long time. We're calling it the best-kept secret in the Central West End, if not the city. It's yeah. a... 110-year-old, 500-seat auditorium. It's acoustically perfect. It plays like a Stradivarius, and uh, it's just not used enough. So I I met Bob, and um, he said, we need to do a comedy show here before I die. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) so so from that, you know, uh, I said, well, let's let's think about maybe doing more. And uh, then we thought we'd do some African-American themed thing, and I said, let's do some St. Louis themed thing. And it turned into like this comedy blues extravaganza yeah. and um we hope to perpetuate it and this will be our inaugural show coming up saturday True. all st louis uh, cast of uh, characters if you don't mind yeah, my yeah we've, we've even got a local artist named kelly burris who's right. going to be showing her work and talking about it it's all about promoting arts and really who are we as yeah. a city i mean there's there's kind of a, a an identity crisis in st louis and i think our art our history inform us as to who we are Yes. yes. Well, Tuffy, the, the blues play a big part in St. Louis history, and, and you're a big, you're a big part of that, and you're a part of the program on Saturday as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tuffy and Logan, a uh, blues band. Uh, Logan's my partner. He's a great, great guitar player, and I'm a singer. Fantastic. I'm a blues singer. I'm a. I can hear that. <laughs> uh, that voice is right there. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, I'd like to say I'm a hard living, Harley riding, blues singing <laughs> son of a man. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I do. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, well, what, what are some of the things we're going to be hearing from you? Well, I, I love Howlin' Wolf, uh-huh. Muddy Waters, Albert King, B.B. Yeah. B. King, just the, the blues greats. You can't, you can't yeah, mess with can't that. Go, yeah. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Bob, it's your turn. Well, you can't go wrong is true because all of the blues are really a, part of it originated here in St. Louis with people like Albert King, Lil Milton, Ike Turner, uh, Diddy Bo Hill. There were so many performers that were performing the blues and the comedians. A lot of people don't know that Richard Pryor used to come down from Peoria, Illinois here. Red Fox is from here. Mm -hmm. Dick Gregory is from here. Uh, When Bill Cosby first came to St. Louis, yours truly took him up and down Gaslight Square uh, eating water and watermelon and pizza. (laughs) But we had a good time, and I took him over on... on, uh, Linda, where there was a club called the Celebrity Room, where there was a comedian by the name of David Knows Bowl. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but we went in there, and sure enough, David quit playing the piano and come running over to Bill. Bill, congratulations. I hear that you're going to be a performer with Robert Culp in a TV series called I Spy and Sheldon Leonard. So I thought Bill was pulling my leg when he told me all this, but he wasn't. And that's why it's so hard for me to believe that Bill did what he did, you know. But I guess that's life, and yours truly got his start from radio. You know, I was affiliated with radio. Can you mention the call letters? Of course. Radio station uh, WGNU, 920 AM on your radio dial. I had a show called Comedy Time, and I was affiliated with Onion Harden and uh, Charles Gear and Chuck Norman, you know, I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, yeah, sure. It, Chuck was a great man. He, I mean, we just had such a good relationship, you know, especially when he had his Christmas program because I kept bugging him to try to do his Christmas program. And this is going to be a, I'm so glad that Brian and 
Tuffy are doing this because when you get 86 years old, you know you're on your last leg. I uh, barely made it in here today. <laughs> yeah, you're looking, you're looking and sounding pretty good, Tuffy. Do you think you're going to get a word in edgewise with this guy? In the room? No, not at all. <laughs> I, I, I haven't yet. I just <laughs> learned it. And he tries to tell me what to sing. Hey, yeah. I want you to do Wang such and such. Dang <laughs> I said, Bob, you just stick to the comedy and let me play the music, okay? Yeah, yeah. Wang Dang Doola all night long. Yeah. Brian, you, you got the right guys, I think, for a uh, for Oh, a I got the easy Saturday part. Night. I just let them loose. I put them up on that stage, and they go. And uh, they never fail to entertain. Even in planning this, we've just been having so many laughs and so much fun. And, uh, you know, Bob, I feel like I made a new friend since we yeah. started this thing. Me too. The other thing is, um, you know, Bob made it very clear. He wanted to, like, create a situation where we could perpetuate this by bringing in new talent. And so that's what we're all about. We're and about there are going to be other stores. If, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you, uh, yeah, like, give some names. Uh, Divalicious, Althea Johnson. She's, mm-hmm. she's really um, a female comedian, mm-hmm. and she's from St. Louis, and the girl is fantastic. And then there, what I call the magician, Don Clare, because he does a lot. He's a comedian, but he does a lot of things with milk bottles and stuff <laughs> like that. And then, of course, Davy Dave. Davy has been on, on Last Comic Standing, and he's on the show. And so it, it ought to be a exciting, like we use the word extravaganza. And, and uh, it's just going to be a fun thing to try to maintain the building and have a veneer for young talent because we're trying to open up the doors to teach. You know, when you say, oh, you're a comedian, well, tell me a joke. But it's more to being a comedian than just telling a joke. You have to prepare yourself just like you had to Mm -hmm. prepare yourself for this radio show. Mm -hmm. There's timing, delivery, stage presence, voice modulation, all that comes into play, and this is what we want to pass on to young singers that want to sing the blues, people that want to play the drums. So we're trying. What Brian is trying to do, maybe long after I'm gone, this will be a place for youngsters to come and exercise and have a place to show what they can do. We don't have enough of that, and maybe that will eliminate all this violence that's being perpetrated in our society. That's kind of an undercurrent, Tuffy, kind of an undercurrent of what you're doing this for, isn't it? Well, absolutely. I mean, we we, we want to entertain. Yes, we want people to hear good music. We want people to have uh, hear good jokes and have a good time. But at the same time, we want to impart something valuable back into the community. Yes. To yes. community. This, this spirit, this roots, St. Louis goes deep with, with comedy, blues. We also want to, as Bob said, encourage young people to, to go into the arts. We're, you know, we're abandoning the arts, and arts are so much a, a, a part of culture. I remember years I'm ago. Amen, brother. Yeah, do the arts lead culture or do the arts reflect culture? And they're actually a little bit of both, right? But they're important. Mm-hmm. We have to have them. So, yeah, we're, we're doing all of the above. Down Brian, one of the big problems in this community, and I think everybody here would agree, is the, the polarization. It's, it, it exists yes, here and yes. it exists in many places. Yes. Is, is this part of your objective? I noticed that in some of the things I've read about it, you talk about bridging the Del Mar divide. Yeah, absolutely. Instance, that That's, uh, I mean, this is a great opportunity for us to do that. We've talked about that a lot, too. Um, we can come together for our common love of the music. Uh, we all need a good joke from time to time. Um, but, you know, I know, Bob, you're going to talk about, like, being black in the 1960s and, uh, you know, how things have changed. And I think it's really important that we have these dialogues in a safe, you know, uh, pleasant way. I mean, the, the mission of the Link Auditorium is to edify the public. So we're going to entertain, but we're going to include some kind of educational component as well and promote conversations. And, oh, go I'm ahead. No, Tuffy, well, go ahead. I, yeah. When we talk about polarization, though, it really doesn't exist within the blues comedy world. I mean, are there some individuals? Yes. Um, my band, I'm, I'm the only black guy in my yeah. band. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and if you hear John Logan play guitar, oh, you, don't, you, don't, fantastic. you don't see race. All you hear are these wonderful notes. And he's like Eddie Clopton. I don't know if you're familiar what, with him. Well, Eric we call him Eric Clapton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah you're you com- know you're who comedian, I'm talking right? about. <laughs> May Willow used to get on me all the time about enunciation and mispronouncing people. But that's what I do. I'm trying to see if you're paying attention. 
attention. <laughs> you, know, you know, I want to just come back to what you were saying, though, Tuffy, is because I'm not uh, I'm not pointing or looking at the performers. I'm looking at the audiences. Yeah. That's 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 right. the point. Right. The, right. the 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 act the uh, artists are together. Sure. Already, it's right. the audience we got to bring together. Well, yeah. that's true. That's yeah. true. And and that's one of the reasons why I love blues and I love jazz is because. When you look at a blues or a jazz audience, you really see integration, true integration, and and it transcends it transcends uh, economic uh, uh, strata as well as racial strata. So I I love it. Yes, it's all about love and happiness. It's all about developing that understanding of what true love is. You know, the opposite of love is evil. If you spell love backwards, you get evil. Mm. If you spell God backwards, you get a dog. So I'm not into dogs nor evil. I'm into love and happiness. And, and all my 80-some some years on this planet is all I ever tried to do was entertain, make people laugh, both white and black, Chinese too. <laughs> hey, yeah, Doc, yeah. can I share with you a, yeah. a, what I call a far side moment? Remember the old far side? Aaron Larson, I sure do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I had a far side moment about 20 years ago with uh, two of my friends. Three of us were, were black. We walked into this blues bar in Kansas City, went in, walked down the steps. It was a cellar blues bar, great blues band playing. Place was packed. We were the only three black guys in there. <laughs> that was a far side moment, a blues bar, and we were the only three black people in there. But hey, it happens with with uh, with blues, jazz, comedy. It did, yeah. cause like I used to go to the Playboy Club. I was one of the few blacks when when Hugh Hefner had the Playboy Club on Lendo, and there it. were people like Allen and Rossi. Mm-hmm. I would go in there, and he and would go comp- in there and read them. He would go there to read, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'd go there to compens. I did like Milton Berle. I was the black Milton Berle of the city of St. Louis. You know, I would take all of Alan and Rossi's jokes and bring them back to the so-called Sit ghetto. Still. Like, she's got a V-neck dress on. What that V stand for? Virgin? Oh, that's an old dress. She got to run in her stock, and if you saw what the run saw, you'd be running too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, all of this humor came, even going all the way back to Lenny Bruce. There were people like, everybody was upset about what Lenny Bruce, the same as they were about Elvis Presley, on the Ed Sullivan show, when they come to find out it wasn't nothing to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, nowadays it's, it doesn't mean anything. You, you go back to the Gaslight Square days and beyond. Well, how, how has comedy changed uh, between then and now and what you're going to be well, doing Saturday? Okay, the comedy has evolved to where they're what we call vulgarity or what they call blue material. It was bl- At the time I started, we were working what they call the chitlin circuit. And had it not been for Dick Gregory, to me, Dick Gregory was to African-American comedy what Jackie Robinson was to baseball. Mm-hmm. Dick Gregory was the first one to cross over, although Dick Gregory absolutely refused to make movies, to have a TV show, because he did not want to do like what Cedric the Entertainer did. No disrespect to Cedric, but Cedric made a movie called the barbershop and where Cedric talked about Martin Luther King being a, can I use the word punk <laughs> or sissy, and I, uh, uh, and and said that Rosie Parks was a big fat lady. That's that's degrading, you know. Cedric ought to po- apologize a thousand times for letting them people put that type of w- words in his mouth just to make a movie, just to make money, because that's degrading to Martin Luther King and to Rosie Parks and to women. Women are the most powerful thing on this planet. In my eyesight, I look at Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, since this is Black History Month. These people were dear to me. My mama, you know, yeah. she wasn't none of all that stuff that Tupac and Biggie and, and all these guys want, want to make reference to those type of words. To me, my mother was the most powerful lady on the planet. She would go out and work hard to get... Christmas gift for me and my sister and come back and see a white man gave it to us. Santa Claus. You know, it's got to be something wrong with that concept. So that's that's where I'm at. Uh, Tuffy, are you doing any mentoring of young of younger people these days? Well, I, I try. I and, and I actually do. I've got a couple uh, youngsters 
I, I call them youngsters. They're, they're in their late 20s and 30s. They're youngsters. <laughs> they're, they're youngsters. Uh, that I, I call my nephews, and, I, and uh, I'm mentoring them all of the time, really, um, to not only, not only about music, and and trying yes. to, to guide them in terms of developing their craft. There, or there's a, there's a, I'm not a drummer, but there's one a, one that I've been really trying to work with him on his drum, saying, "Hey, listen to this guy. Listen to this song here, and and learn th- those techniques. Just practice them, emulate them, and and then make it yours after a time period." So yes, I do that, but but I'm also working with them, saying, "You got to get a skill." You don't have to go to college, per se. Yes. I, I think there's a big mistake that we have in saying that everyone needs to have a bachelor's degree now. That's not necessarily true. I, I, I told my own son, I said, I'd love to have an electrician in the family. I'd love to have a plumber in the family. A carpenter. A yeah, carpenter, yeah, absolutely. Absu- absolutely. Now, so it just so happens that he does go to college, and he wants to go that academic route, but that's his decision. I don't. I think we make a mistake trying to tell all these kids, go to yes, college, go yes, to college. No, yes. go to trade school. Get a skill. Yes. There's we've, a lot of things. We've done do. programs on that. It's a, yes. uh, it's a very important issue. Brian, uh, are any of Tuffy's kids going to make it to, to your stage at some point? <laughs> well, what do you think? Uh, actually, we had a segment for young talent, and we reached out, and it turns out uh, some of the kids uh, have another show that night. So there's actually still a segment if we had some young people, that, uh, we'll fill it with other stuff. But is, is there enough talent in St. Louis to sustain uh, ongoing performances at the link? Oh, yes. I, I believe so, and um, you know we we aim to find out. We're going to just keep doing this thing until we run out of talent. I don't think that'll ever happen. So, well, that goes back to one of the things you said. The talent's here. Actually, the question is: is can we get the audiences out? Uh, yeah. Thank you. There, there, yeah. There's a lot of talent here. And that's what this is all about. Tickets available exactly. for Saturday night? Yep. You can find them on Eventbrite or the Link Auditorium on Facebook. They are $10 oh, uh, in advance, 15 at the door. Doors open at 630, and the address is 4504 Westminster. And that's yeah. Saturday at 7 o'clock. Yes, sir. The Hope link. to see you there. Well, I would love to be there. I would love <laughs> okay. to be there. Well, I, can, I want to see you in I action. Can I give you a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. Are you kidding We've got to end it right here, guys. Our time is running out. Brian El says it. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, good you. luck at the link. Robert, Tuffy, Brandon, great to see you. Keep those pipes going, man. you got some great pipes. Thank you. And I want to say Bob, thank you so much for Bob having Lawrence, us. Bob Lawrence, thank and, you for being with us. God bless you. Keep doing the show that you're doing, sir. And you keep doing it, too. Thank you so much. Archive versions of past St. Louis on the Air programs available for download or podcast at stlpublicradio.org slash stlonair. It's a production of St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. Thanks for listening. I'm Don Marsh. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.